Did you know that there's two different ways that you can define a neural network in PyTorch? You can use a sequence or you can use a class. Which of these two approaches do we use in my course on deep learning and why? And what's the difference between these two different ways? So let's jump right into it. This code I always put at the beginning, it allows Colab, or if you're running it locally, to determine what sort of accelerator you have. This will detect CUDA since I am running it in Colab. And we detect CUDA, so let's continue. Let's look at sequences first. This is what we've been using in this course up to this point. This is what we'll use on most of the PyTorch neural networks in this course. If you can get by with using a sequence, this is definitely the easier way to go. If you have a nice, simple neural network where it's layer, 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 like many of these are, then you are going to be able to define it like this. If you have multiple paths through it, you will probably need to define it as a class, which we'll see in a moment. For like a generative adversarial neural network, you would need a bit more control if you were gonna build one of those from scratch. So let's first look at this other approach that we have not seen yet in the course. It's really very similar. I'm taking exactly the same neural network that I showed you there, and we are going to define it as a class. It's something that extends neural network module. We have the initialization, so we're creating all of these layers, and rather than just lining them up straight into the sequence like we do here, we're actually defining them as class level variables, or uh, member variables, so they're created once per in instance of this neural network. Here, you can see fully connected one, fully connected two. We're even creating the individual activation functions as separate instances, instance variables. And then when forward is finally called, we get the X input and we just keep passing the X and changing the X as we go completely through. And we shoot through all of these layers. There's a lot more going on here because if you get these in the wrong order, uh, then you're, you're gonna potentially mess it up. Where as up here, you're simply just, just batching them really together. Obviously the order that you define them here doesn't matter because this is just variable initialization. I have some description here of how you choose the, the appropriate method. And then examples here of showing a full neural network in the, in the class style. So we can, we can simply run it and it's gonna perform just like the sequence version of this same horsepower class that you saw in previous previous modules of this, of this course. It's gonna run through and it's going to output um, and, and train the neural network to less error. So the class is defined here. You have to define the forward and the init. You can take great, much, much greater control over what the neural network is doing if, if you need that level of control. If you don't need that level of control, I would say by all means, simply just put it into a sequence. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give, uh, give it a like, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss further parts of this course or other courses and projects that I work on in the areas of artificial intelligence.